the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There will be a collection taken up at this Mass. And at this time, we ask that you please silence your cell phones. Our opening hymn will be in your missalette, number 30, Immaculate Mary, number 30 in your missalette.
A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was open, and the ark of his covenant could be seen in the temple. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diadems. Its tail swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have salvation and power come, and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his anointed one. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked down upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Jesus Christ, Today, our Holy Mother Church celebrates the feast of the Assumption of Blessed Virgin Mary. The feast of the Assumption is one of the most important feasts of Our Lady. Catholics believe in the Assumption of the Virgin Mary into heaven. We believe that when her earthly life was finished, Mary was taken up, body and soul into heavenly glory, where the Lord exalted her as Queen of Heaven. Today's readings, the first and gospel about women and God's creative, redemptive and salvific action through them. In the first reading, the author of Revelation probably did not have Mary of Nazareth in mind when he described the woman in this narrative. He uses the woman as a symbol for the nation and people Israel. She is pictured as giving birth as Israel brought forth the Messiah through his pains. The woman is also symbolic of the church and the woman's offspring signifies the way the church brings Christ into the world world. The second reading taken from 1st Corinthians is Paul's defense of the resurrection of the dead and a selection on the feast of our heavenly mothers assumption into heaven. 
in the Magnificat, the song of Mary given in today's gospel. Mary acknowledges that the Almighty has done great things for her. Besides honoring her as Jesus' mother, God has blessed her with a gift of bodily ascension. God, who has lifted up his lowly servant Mary, lifts up all the lowly, not only because they are faithful, but also God is faithful to the promise of divine mercy. Thus, the Feast of the Assumption celebrates the mercy of God or the victory of God's mercy as expressed in Mary's Magnificat. It was on November 1st, 1950, that through the Apostolic Constitution, Munifis Centimus Deus, that means the most bountiful God, Pope Pius XII officially declared the Assumption as a dogma of Catholic faith. On this important feast day, we try to answer two questions. The first, what is meant by Assumption? The second, why do we believe in Mary's Assumption into heaven? Answer to the first question, Assumption means that after her death, Mary was taken into heaven, both body and soul, as a reward for her sacrificial cooperation in the divine plan of salvation. Coming to the second question, why do we believe in Mary's Assumption into heaven? Pope Pius XII in the papal document gives four reasons why we believe in the dogma of Assumption of the Mary. First reason he gives that the non-stop tradition about Mary's death and Assumption starting from the first century. Second reason he gives that the belief expressed in all the ancient liturgies of the church. The third reason he gives the negative evidence of the absence and veneration of the tomb of Mary. Why? Most of the apostles have their tombs. The fourth reason he gives that the possibility of bodily assumption warranted in the Old Testament. In the case of Yenna, we can see from book of Genesis chapter 5 verse 24. Perhaps Moses, we can see from Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 4 and especially Elijah. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 4. Also, Pope gives the theological reasons. The first reason he gives that the degeneration of the body after death is the consequence of original sin. And Mary, as immaculately conceived, is exempted from the postmodern decay of the body. The second reason he gives that as the receiver of the fullness of grace and holiness because she is mother of Jesus and co-redeemer with him. Mary's place is with her son, God's son Jesus the Redeemer in the abode of holiness heaven. Yes, dear friends, as we are celebrating the Feast of the Assumption, what message we can get it? Mary's Assumption gives us the assurance and hope of our own resurrection and ascension into heaven on the last day of our last judgment. It is a sign to us that someday, through God's grace and our goodwill, we too will join the Blessed Mother in giving glory to God. It points the way for all followers of Christ who imitate Mary's fidelity and obedience to God's will. Also, since Mary's assumption was a reward for her saintly life, this feast remains 
says that we too must be pure and holy in body and soul since our bodies will be glorified on the last day of our resurrection. Saint Paul tells us that our bodies are the temples of God because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. He also reminds us that our bodies are members of the body of Christ. Also, this feast gives us the message of total liberation. Jesus tells us in John chapter 8 verse 34 that everyone who sins is a slave of sin. And St. Paul reminds us that since Christ has set us free, we should be slaves of sin no more. Thus, the assumption encourages to work with God to be liberated from the bondage of evil, from impure, unjust, and uncharitable thoughts and habits, and from the bonds of jealousy, envy, and hatred. Finally, it is always an inspiring thought in our moments of temptation and despair to remember that we have a powerful Heavenly Mother constantly interceding for us before her Son, our Lord Jesus in heaven. The Feast of Mary's Assumption challenges to imitate her self-sacrificing love, her everlasting faith and her Therefore, on this feast day of our Heavenly Mother, let us offer ourselves on the altar and pray for her special care and loving protection in helping us lead a purer and holier life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
merciful God. Days of prayers and petitions be brought in front of you. If it is according to your will, grant all our needs. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
is oblation. Our tribute of homage rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assume into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven. As the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign to your hope and comfort to your pilgrim people, rightly you would not follow her to see the corruption of the truth, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the chorus of angels, we praise you and with joy.
may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your help especially the most blessed virgin mary mother of god and the blessed saint joseph yes folks with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help may this sacrifice of our reconciliation be prayed for
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray.